Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Protests going late into the night in our nation's capital after the U.S. Supreme Court overturns Roe v. Wade, which has stood for nearly 50 years. Here in Michigan, the legal fight for abortion is still playing out. Last month, a judge suspended a 1931 law that made abortion a crime. So until the state Supreme Court rules on the law, abortion remains legal in Michigan. Much different story across the country, with 26 states having laws indicating they plan to ban abortion. Anger over today's landmark decision resulted in two big protests in Detroit and Ann Arbor, with more than 1,000 people rallying at each event. Our Mara McDonald is live in Ann Arbor tonight. Mara, a whole lot of signature gatherers were out at both locations. Kimberly, that's right. And, you know, it's interesting to note that both of both of these rallies had huge amount of signature gatherers at them, all looking to put abortion on the ballot in Michigan in November. Ann Arbor tonight on the Diag, where the group assembled screamed out their collective frustration with the Supreme Court's decision. We were supposed to be hanging out on a back porch eating blueberry crisp, and we said, no, nope, we're going to the Diag. With the blueberry crisp now firmly on the back burner, Laura and so many others turned out in Ann Arbor. What happens, unfortunately, is people get pregnant with not meaning to, even if they take precautions. Um, their whole life hangs in the balance. And having the right to make a decision about how your life is going to proceed is so critical. Anybody that didn't see this coming in the last three to five years has not been paying attention. And now that, now that the fight's on, you know, it's game on. We've got to figure out how to win this thing. Well-attended protests had people turning out en masse, both in Ann Arbor and in downtown Detroit at the federal courthouse. I have nieces uh, who are of reproductive age. Uh, it, it is all I've known that I can make decisions about my body. Uh, I am scared for them and what that could mean for their future. Come on, come on, join the fight! The real question tonight, does this outrage manifest into any action in the midterms in the fall? I would say to everybody here tonight, we gotta make our voices heard. You read this opinion, you should be worried about what Justice Thomas said as well, and saying that we need to relook at every decision. Back here live, those petition gatherers were out simply because it is a very heavy lift to get this ballot proposal on the ballot in the fall. It needs 425,000 valid signatures that are due about the second week of July. We are live in Ann Arbor tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Okay, Mara, thanks. Well, Governor Gretchen Whitmer has been very vocal in the past few months about making sure the state's 1931 abortion ban does not become law. Meanwhile, the legislative director for Michigan's Right to Life says today's ruling from the bench is just the beginning. There is a lot of uncertainty right now, and for Michigan women, including my own daughters, um, I'm going to continue to fight like hell to protect and make sure that they've got the same rights I've had my whole life. This is the first step. Getting rid of that federal right to abortion in the Constitution that was never there, that was discovered, um, and returning the decision back to the states will be the first step in allowing states to once again protect the unborn child legally. Those against abortion rallied across the state today. One celebration took place this afternoon at Planned Parenthood's Livonia Health Center. Supporters say Michigan's 1931 law that makes abortion a crime is valid and should stand. Today's rally was sponsored by Citizens for Life. This is an amazing victory because it means that the floodgates of the killing of innocent human life is over. It means that our country has created at least an environment, an opportunity where we can continue to defend life in a way that we could not before. We have much more on today's ruling at clickondetroit.com, including reaction from local leaders. We've also posted the entire 213-page opinion. It's all right there on the homepage of our website.
We have some breaking news coming in now from Wayne, where police say they've arrested a man wanted for a double murder. Police say Christopher Greer is suspected of shooting and killing two sisters back in January. Dominique Parchman and Cheyenne Hall were found shot in their apartment. Now nearly six months after their murder, police have Greer in custody and believe he is responsible. Okay, turning now to the forecast with temperatures still what in the 70s right now. It just uh, doesn't just drop immediately, does it anymore? No, it's uh, hanging it on. Doesn't. Let's bring in Brian Shurman is uh, in tonight. And Brian, we do have some sun on the way and uh, some more heat over the weekend. Yeah, it's going to feel a little more like summer, Jason and Kimberly, as we head throughout the weekend. And we're also going to look at some rain heading our way for the second half of the weekend as well. Tonight, though, a really nice night to get outside. Tower cam from Windsor looking across the lake into downtown Detroit. We couldn't ask for a better night. Mainly clear skies. Most everyone into the 70s. 74 right now here in Detroit. 71 as you work over into Howell. 74 over in Pontiac. And 73 as you work into Adrian. We've been keeping an eye on our dew points all week. This is the measure of the moisture content of the atmosphere. 50s and 60s are good for us. Most everyone is below that 60 degree mark. But these numbers are going to start to creep up tomorrow. Feeling much more like summer tomorrow than it has pretty much for the last two to three days. We'll start off in the 70s early tomorrow morning with lots of sunshine and a little more cloud cover rolling in by the afternoon. Three things to know heading into the weekend. That humidity comes back with rain showers on Sunday. A picture perfect forecast though is on the way for the Ford fireworks on Monday. I'll detail out what you can expect in your complete forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Brian, thank you. A mother facing charges tonight after the body of her three year old son is found in a freezer. It happened this morning at a home on Monte Vista near Grand River and I-96 on the city's west side. Neighbors say the child had been missing since January 5th. Five other children were believed to be in the house when the discovery was made by police during a welfare check. We had been praying that the little boy would be found, but I had no idea he would be found dead. He was blind. And we're looking to see uh, what other incidents she's had with uh, CPS as well as the police department. That will be part of our overall investigation. We're told the children have been removed from the home. No word on what charges that mother will face. Today, Congress approving a bipartisan gun deal in what amounts to the first major federal gun safety legislation in decades. The bill includes $750 million for mental health, school safety, crisis intervention programs, and incentives for states to enact red flag laws. The measure was overwhelmingly approved in the House after securing a narrow majority in the Senate last night. We take a historic first step toward ending the epidemic of gun violence in this nation. This is the sweet spot, Madam President, making America safer, especially for kids in school, without making our country one bit less free. The bipartisan deal required the support of 15 Republicans in the Senate. President Biden is expected to sign the bill into law tomorrow. A huge turnout tonight on Detroit's east side for the kickoff to this year's Occupy the Corner event, which included celebrity appearances and a special bike giveaway. Our Megan Woods was there and explains the history behind the event. Hundreds of Detroit families are going home with a free bike tonight, but the purpose behind this event goes beyond that. Can't wait to ride it. <laughs> I can have something to do this summer. Meet eight-year-old Chase. He just learned how to ride a bike. Ride your bike, y'all. He's so excited about his new bike, he knows the first place he's riding it to. Maybe to the at a dairy point. <laughs> and that big grin is one of the 200 spotted on children walking away from Occupy the Corner with a free bike. Then there's the smiles of proud parents like Elizabeth Winchester. Her son, Dylan, also got a bike. It is amazing. I'm so glad that he could be happy and enjoy your free event and just enjoy yourself. Detroit City Council President Mary Sheffield says this isn't just an event. It's essentially government in their backyard. Mental health resources out here, resources for um, property taxes, um, expungements for your records. Occupy the Corner was an event in New York led by Reverend Al Sharpton. The goal is to occupy high crime areas to lower gun violence by getting to the root of the problem. I'm a firm believer that you can't police your way out of everything. 
anything, you have to address the underlying issues of violence. And I believe that that is access to a job, access to health care, access to education, and all of those resources are here on site today. They wrapped up this event in a very special way by honoring the two community members who were there at Team Wellness back in March when a security guard was shot and killed. Does it take a whole lot to perform CPR on somebody while they take their last breath? In Detroit, I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. Okay, Megan.